My name is Zhenya and I, I come from Ukraine. I lived my whole life in Kyiv. I was brought up there and I do mostly photography. I do other sorts of arts. I don't necessarily do photography only as an artistic thing. <laughs> one friend of mine told me I'm a hustler in a good way. I mean, the one who's like seeking opportunities constantly and that's definitely my type of personality. I'm a curious person who likes living, who likes life and who likes other people and who's curious about other people. Since the war itself started in 2014, I was there, I never left. So I know this feeling of the first territory being annexed, the first territory being taken with power and aggression. So it, it hurts you a lot and it's really impossible to describe it to others who never witnessed it. But I didn't flee for, yeah, for multiple reasons. Cause I have my family there, cause I have all my possessions there. It's also, sounds funny, but somehow the, the, the amount of things, the price of things, the amount of money or your, like, uh, your house or whatsoever, those things actually sometimes define your decisions, like decisions in your life, which might be crucial, like you might die, but you stay also because of that. So, you know, like I didn't flee the country because I'm escaping the war. I don't feel that way, definitely. I don't feel myself as a refugee. Basically, I'm living the life I always used to leave with this like opportunity seeking thing like seeing people and doing my weird things but outside of my my box so to say which i kind of always wanted to do but i had like i had no idea how to go somewhere else and stay there for a while it feels like the worst circumstances you can imagine to finally like fulfill some of your dreams basically but i was also aware of the fact that it's it might be now or never sometimes people ask me like oh so why did you decide to stay in berlin for instance or what are your plans for the future I was like dude like there is no planning i don't have this feeling of like home which is weird like i'm supposed to at least my like neurons should have worked this way they should have <laughs> they should have um given me this weird feeling of like this is my comfort zone like leaving it means like uh, breaking your connections in your brain but no i definitely feel very comfortable like i i feel i'm always bringing this idea of home with me i'm definitely dividing my like well-being, so to say, uh, which is the main reason why I moved from Ukraine, because I literally don't like living in um, an environment where I would be constantly alert, like you have air alerts and you kind of have to go downstairs, you have to, you know, like you get, your normal life gets interrupted all the time. And also, yeah, there are other issues, again, connected to, like, your environment, the ecological situation and, you know, all that. So, basically, my decision was based on my well-being, like, literally, my body wants to be in a better place. But there is another thing, like, letting you, like, I'm not, it's not only, like, I'm not letting myself be cheerful, I don't want to be cheerful. Some things actually require a different state and you're okay in it because you're conscious of what's going on and it's fine that you don't want to be cheerful uh, it's not only about grief which is there because people keep dying constantly and they keep russians keep destroying not only cities towns villages but also the land uh it's really heartbreaking to see for instance to see the images of like fields um, being covered with like holes like they would literally like rape the land our choice is literally between like less people dying or everybody dies so and everybody acknowledged that that and we have like lgbtq plus people in the army we have feminist women in general in our army we have 
pacifists, we have musicians and artists who join the army, although they have never been anywhere close to any sort of aggression. You know, people are really, they, they are grown-ups in these terms. But also I'm pretty m much um, imagining things being at least a bit different if there was more responsibility from you know these big boys we're talking about like it's it's of course russia is an aggressor but that's politicians job to prevent things like this i i honestly have no idea how many people related to russia or tied to russia are there in our not only government but like president's office you know and and it's really tricky and it's only about Ukraine, but then if you take Europe, they are there as well. And they really influence lots of decisions. It's the war of ideas as well, and it feels really weird when Europeans are not really, like, accepting this war as their reality as well. If we talk about peace, in our case, it means, like, defending. So, the feministic ideas um, in our case, I just feel like, at the moment, in a way, they just don't really work. You can't apply them to this reality. Because the only thing you can do, no matter who you are and what your ideas are, the only thing you can do is, like, defend and, in the end, defeat the enemy. We kind of have to force Russia to peace. The feministic ideas I've known before which could have been applied to so many aspects of our life, right now they just feel like unapplied, like how, how and where, it just... <laughs>